Hi folks, welcome back to the Tabletop's Edge and our tutorial series on World in Flames Collector's Edition. Today we're going to be taking a look at the impulse type uh, mechanism. That's one of the more unique features of World in Flames and it can take new players uh, a little bit of time to kind of wrap their heads fully around it. So I wanted to talk about this uh, in a little bit more detail than I did back in the orientation uh, tutorial. Um, now, most games will have some sort of rule in place to limit the player's ability to do whatever they want, whenever they want, with all of their units, to, to model the, the friction of war. And World in Flames uses the impulse type, the action type, uh, during your impulses to kind of do that and reflect the limitations and difficulties of uh, command and control that each of the major powers face during the war. So... That being said, let's dive in and take a little closer look at uh, what uh, action type is all about here in World in Flames. Now, when it comes to understanding what is allowed and what is not allowed during the various types of actions, you're going to need two charts, the Allowable Activities chart and the Major Power Activities Limits chart. Both of them are located next to one another in the uh, Charts Player Aid, uh, which you can see laid out here before us. Now, at the beginning of your impulse, right after the Declare War step, you will have to choose the type of action that each of your major powers will be doing for that impulse. So if it's a two-player game and you're playing the, uh, the Axis, uh, you will make a selection independently for Japan, Germany, and Italy. So each of them will be doing, uh, making their own decision. They may end up doing the same type of impulse, but uh, yeah, it's important to understand that each major power is acting independently when it comes to uh, in, uh, action type. There are five different types of actions to choose from. You have the pass action, naval action, air action, land action, and combined action. So let's talk about each of these in turn and uh, figure out uh, what you can and can't do. Let's talk about the pass action first since it's the simplest and it uh, does just what it sounds like it does. When you choose the pass action, uh, that major power will be unable to do any other activities for the rest of this impulse. Now, the only two exceptions to that are if you have naval units that are already at sea in a sea box and a uh, naval combat is initiated by someone else, maybe one of your allies, that involves the units in that sea box, your units will fight in that naval combat. Likewise, if you have uh, ground or air units that are being transported by an allied uh, major power and that major power returns to base during this impulse, your units will uh, be transported back to uh, back to that port with the other unit. But other than that, a pass and you are done for the impulse. Now, why would you ever want to pass? Uh, passing gives you a bonus in your um, die roll at the end of the impulse to end the turn. So if you're looking to cut the turn short, either because all of your stuff's turned face down and you can't do anything with it, or the enemy is kind of putting you in a bad way, uh, passing would be your uh, best chance to end the turn a little earlier than you otherwise would have. Now, the other four action types are all listed here on the allowable activities chart, and they've done a nice job in World in Flames with laying out very clearly um, the allowable activities. You can see across the top here in red are the four uh, action types you can choose, as well as the an enemy impulse. So it also tells you what you can and cannot do uh, during the other side's impulse. And there are a few things that, uh, that you will be able to do when it's the uh, other player's impulse. Down the left side here in blue, you can see the various different types of activities that you're going to want to do uh, with your units on any given impulse. How this works is uh, essentially you cross-reference the type of action that you've chosen for this impulse with the type of uh, activity you wish to do. And if there is a check mark in the box, for instance, naval movement during a naval impulse, that check mark indicates that you can do that type of activity an unlimited number of times. Now that's an unlimited number of times uh, with all of your forces. Each unit can still only move once Per impulse, no matter what type of uh, impulse or what type of unit you're talking about here. So if the box is blank, that means that that type of activity is not allowed. So during an air or a land uh, action, naval movement by your units is not allowed. 
The third type of uh, result you're going to see in the box is a letter. And this letter code is used down on the major power activities limits. And we'll look at that in uh, just a moment. Uh, there are a couple of um, activities that have some uh, notes indicated here. And the allowable activities notes box here spells that out pretty clearly. For instance, naval movement during an enemy's impulse, yes. Uh, however, note two says it's only allowed when a unit space is overrun. So you can see that um, looking down through the naval uh, action type, you're able to declare war, you can uh, fly some combat air patrol, you can escort with aircraft, and you can intercept with your, with your fighters. And you'll note that um, no matter what type of impulse, whether it's one of yours or the enemy's impulse, you will always be able to fly some combat air patrol, you can escort or intercept uh, aircraft with your fighters. Um, Further down, you know, rail movement, land movement, uh, no invasions, interestingly enough, even though it involves ships, is not allowed during a naval impulse. If you want to actually invade, since it's the land units that are doing the fighting and attacking, even if, though they're attacking from uh, naval vessels, you'll either have to choose a land impulse or a combined, and you'll see there's some limitations on the combined here. Um, if you do an air action, you're going to have basically unlimited air actions, but you're going to be restricted in uh, naval activity and land activity. Same thing with land. This is good for when you have a lot of land units that you want to move and or fight with. Now, the combined, the combined allows you to do a little bit of everything. So you can see in a combined, you are allowed some naval movement. There's some limitations on that. You're also allowed some rail movement, some land movement. You can ground strike with your aircraft. You can do strategic bombardment. Uh, you can even make some land attacks. So the combined is good for when you've got those situations where you need to uh, do a little bit of everything, uh, but you don't necessarily need to do a lot of anything. And you'll find that when you get into the game uh, and start playing it, it's more efficient to do a naval impulse and then on your next impulse do a land impulse than it is to do two combined impulses. That's not to say that there won't be those times when you really need something done, say right now, if you need to uh, maybe try to uh, launch an invasion or rush some reinforcements overseas, you're going to want to uh, do those specific naval moves, which you would have the ability to do under the combined, and then immediately have your troops that are being transported land and maybe uh, invade or attack. Uh, in that case, you're looking at doing a combined. Uh, but generally speaking, you're going to get more bang for your buck in each of the two impulses if you do a purely naval followed by a purely land or a pure air followed by a pure land versus doing a couple of combines. Now let's take a look at the uh, activity limits and we'll see uh, what these letter references mean and what they imply for each of the major powers. Now here we're looking at the major power activities limits chart, which is right below the allowable activities chart. And you're only going to need to consult this chart whenever you run across a letter result in uh, one of the boxes on the allowable activities. What this indicates is that the activity is allowed in the particular type of action you've selected, but it's not, um, it's restricted in the number of actions you can do with that. So it's not unlimited. For instance, in a land impulse, a land action, you have unlimited, you can move all of your land units unlimited. Here, if you were to do a combined, you're still able to move some of your land units, but not all of them. And this chart here will tell you exactly how many you can move. So looking at the chart, you can see across the top in red, it's got uh, air missions, naval moves, rail moves, land moves, and land attacks. Those are the uh, types of activities that uh, are allowed in a combined uh, action or are allowed in limited uh, forms in uh, various types of um, actions. And then down the left side, they also break it down this time by major power. And so each country is going to have different limitations. This is to reflect the differing capabilities of the various major powers, gives a little flavor to uh, way, the way each of the uh, countries uh, plays in the game. Uh, it's kind of a nice, nice touch here. But you'll see what you'll do is you will 
uh, cross-reference the type of activity that you'd like to do here in red. And then below that, you'll see in yellow, it, it breaks it down into the type of action that you've selected. So the air missions in a naval action, the number of air missions you can do in a land action or a combined action, those are the columns you'll be consulting and you'll cross-reference it with the major power that you're interested in. So in the case of, say, the Commonwealth, the Commonwealth can do a total of three air missions when they select a naval action type. If they select the land action type, they're limited to two air missions, but in a combined, they can do five air missions. Now, if they choose an air impulse, they're going to be pretty much unlimited in the uh, number of air missions they can do. Likewise, with naval moves, since you can do no naval moves in an air impulse or a land impulse, and they're unlimited in a naval impulse, the only uh, column you need here for naval moves is for your combined. And you can see following along with the Commonwealth, in the example, they will be able to do two naval moves. We have the same thing here for rail moves, where you can, during air and land impulses, it's going to be the same. So Germany gets three rail moves in either an air uh action or a land action. Everyone, as you can see, only gets one rail move in a combined. Uh, following along, you've got land moves and land attacks. Now, what does, uh, what constitutes a naval move, for instance, or what constitutes a rail move or a land move? With land moves, each unit that you move, each individual unit, uh, counts against this uh, limit for uh, for a, in a combined. So Germany can move six individual land pieces in uh, in their combined. Uh, likewise, a land attack represents um, the uh, number of hexes that you can launch an attack against. So you can involve any number of units, but uh, you're limited to three hexes that uh, that you're able to attack. With naval moves, usually um, for non-neutral powers, for active major powers. Uh, one naval move is a task force or, or any number of uh, naval units that start stacked together and the stack remains together and ends up at the same location, whether it's the same sea box or another port that they end up with. For neutral major powers, each individual naval unit counts as a naval move. And again, with air missions, it's each individual air counter, each air unit that you, uh, that you fly will count against this limit. Now, the colored numbers here to the right of some of these boxes uh, indicate, as you can see over here with the charts, starting in January, February of 1943, these limits are increased by one if they have a uh, 1943 uh, indication in the box. So starting in January, February 1943, Germany would be able to do seven air missions in a combined in uh, 1944, January, February 1944, they're in a land uh, action, the number of air missions goes from four to five. And they're combined, it's going to go uh, plus two once you get to January, February 45. So the 45, 44, 43 indicate that later on in the war, since your number of units on map is going to increase usually pretty dramatically if things are going um, normally. Uh, they've uh, allowed the number of uh, activity limits to increase to, uh, to reflect the growth of uh, the um, armies as the war goes on. Again, there's another very nice note box here to the right. Um, this is uh, really, um, I wanna say self-explanatory, but any questions you have can pretty much be answered just on these two charts here. Um, after you read section uh, 10.2 in the rule book, uh, it's not a very long section um, that talks about uh, the choosing the actions and then section 11 on uh, implementing them. Section 11 is probably the biggest section of the rule book because it goes into the details step by step for every single type of uh, action. So for what we're talking about today, really 10.2 is what you're going to be looking at. Um, but really, after you read that, uh, you'll probably never have to reference the rule book um, to figure out what you can and can't do because these charts are so well done. Um, again, I would recommend new players to have these two charts handy and out uh, until you start to get comfortable with them. The nice thing is uh, it's fairly intuitive. Uh, if it's 
sounds like something related to the action type you're doing. If it involves land units and you've selected a land impulse or land action type for that impulse, um, you're probably going to be able to do it an unlimited number of times. But it's good to just kind of double check here until you get down um, what is and is not allowed. And again, you'll probably be referencing the actual uh, specific limits themselves uh, for quite a while. Uh, even uh, even us experienced guys will uh, will find ourselves turning to uh, turning to this chart here from time to time during a game just to make sure we uh, we haven't forgotten or go over what. Uh, what we're allowed to do. And again, one of the new things in this latest edition uh, is that they are uh, increasing the activity limits uh, in the later years of 43, 44, 45. So that should cover the action type um, for you. Uh, again, any questions, you can consult section 10.2 of the rules, uh, but I think it's fairly straightforward. It's just a matter of learning, uh, getting a feel for, for what you're able to do. Uh, next time, uh, we're going to start looking at uh, land movement. It'll probably be a fairly short video since land movement in World in Flames is, uh, is pretty straightforward, uh, but there are a couple of things we'll want to point out. So again, thanks for watching today, and we'll see you next time.